Welcome back to the second part of our or Introduction to Organic Chemistry Lecture Series. Uh, last time we talked about the properties of carbon. Uh, in this we discuss about how many bonds can carbon have. We talked about the electronic structure, the, the helium configuration for carbon. We discussed about carbon needing four bonds. We reminded ourselves of that. Uh, then we went into the naming of the alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Uh, remember, an alkane is a hydrocarbon chain in which the carbon-carbon bonds are single bonds. And remember that hydrocarbon is a molecule that only consists of carbons and hydrogens. From alkanes, we went into alkenes, which says that it is a hydrocarbon with single and double bonds. Okay. Then we talked about how to name alkynes. Alkynes are again hydrocarbons in which the carbon-carbon double carbon-carbon bonds are either triple bonds or single bonds within the molecule. But for the difference between alkane and alkyne is there must exist at least one triple bond. Okay. Um, today I'm going to review a little bit about this. This is probably going to be a little bit of a shorter video than the last one. The last one was about an hour. This one I'm going to try to shoot for about 30, 35 minutes. Um, so I'm going to draw a couple more structures to refresh our memories of how we did the condensed version, which be CH4 was condensed version. Then we wrote out the stru uh, Lewis structure for it, which was CH. H, H, H. So this was condensed form. I don't think I said this in the last video. This is condensed form. This was the Lewis structure. Not Lewis thought, just called Lewis structure. And then the case of, because it's very hard to do in the case of one carbon, but say for um, butane, uh, not butane, propane is easier. C three H eight. We had the stick structure for that, which we call the line angle form, which is called the line angle formula, or skeletal structure or stick figure. And then this would be the Lewis structure. And then this is called the stick structure. Skeletal form. Or the line angle formula. All whole three names, in my opinion, these two are the most commonly uh, named, uh, two most common names for this type of a uh, drawing, okay? So we're going to do a little bit of review with that. And then we'll go into some physical properties, talk about the melting point, the boiling point. And then we'll go into naming some rings. Then in the next videos, um, we'll probably talk about the acid base. Um, Bronset lowry acids. Uh, for carbon, and we'll be talking about the functional groups, okay? So let's continue. So, so far you've been practicing those three homework problems I assigned last time. This, so, this should be a little bit easier. Suppose we want to um, draw Two, three, di methyl five octene. Uh, sorry. Two, 
2 octane. Okay? So what's this telling us? This is telling us that the longest chain is going to be 8 carbons. So in the loose form would be H, C, H, H. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't be drawing the H's yet. Uh, we're going to have 8 carbons in a row. C, 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 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. Here we're getting that a two at position at carbon number two. So just for simplicity's sake, let this be carbon one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So at carbon number two, we have a methyl. At carbon number three, we have a methyl. We also have a double bond. Okay? Because of the two octane, the rest of these will be H's. So we'll just fill up adding enough H's till this makes sense. So in this case, I did not tell you if this was cis or trans. Okay? So suppose that this was cis two, three dimethyl 2 octene this was cis then that's going to be the Lewis structure so this is Lewis structure for cis why because the two methyl groups are on the same side so then if we went to draw this in the can and the um, excuse me in the stick form we'd have carbon one carbon two and carbon two carbon three there's a double bond the methyl groups are on the same side because it's cis and then we go on to carbon number eight so carbon four carbon five carbon six carbon seven carbon eight so that's for six and the condensed form formula for this is C one two. So there's eight in the long chain, and we have two additional carbons, right? Uh, give me a second. Okay. So in the condensed form for this, we're going to have uh, C. CH3, then we'll have a C, parenthesis CH3, to denote that there is a methyl group attached here. We're going to draw in double bonds going to this C, parenthesis CH3 again, because the methyl group is attached above. And then we're just going to write CH2. And because it happens one, two, three, four times before we change, we throw a four. And then we throw in one more CH3 to complete the molecule. Okay. In the condensed form, this is really not going to tell us anything about sister strands. It's just going to give us the line for it. If I ask for trans, Two, three, di, methyl, two octene. Well, that means the methyls are going to be on the opposite sides. So carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would be trans, right? Or is this again the same issue like we saw in the last video? that cis and trans makes no sense because we have a third methyl group here. Remember the last video we discussed that we it didn't work out right when we had three of the same functional groups attached across a double bond. So cis and trans makes no sense because when I drew what we should have been trans, we basically got the same thing, but we have we flipped across the x-axis. So Trans and cis really does not exist here again. 
And this was just a reminder from the last video. So really, there's only one structure that makes sense for 2,3-dimethyl-2-octene. Okay. So what about if we went with another compound, just to jog our memories? Um, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10... Pentam methyl no name uh no dodecacane okay dodecacane means 12 carbons it's going to be alkane so one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12. And we know we're going to have five methyl groups at positions 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So, C, H, 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 C, H, H, C, H, H, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And then we just throw in the rest with hydrogen so we have it filled up. Okay, that's going to be the Lewis structure for 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, pentamethyl dodecane. So... Now let's draw the um, stick structure for this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then we have at carbon number two a methyl, carbon four a methyl, carbon six a methyl, carbon eight a methyl, carbon ten a methyl. And that would be the stick structure for two, four, six, eight, ten. Pentamethyl dodecacane. This is, as you can see, in the long run, stick structures will be more favorable than drawing out the loose structures, especially for long molecules, especially those molecules we have in biological systems. Okay. So let, now we have reviewed a little bit of last time. Let's talk about the properties of organic compounds. Oh, um, some physical properties actually specifically of the alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Okay, so property one. As branching increases, in general, The melting point will blank, increase or decrease, and the boiling point will blank. So take a second, pause the video, and think. Uh, if we increase the branching, remember branching is where Say we have this structure, okay? We could increase the branching on the same number of carbons and get See, hey, there's more branches on this than there is in this line structure. So as we increase the branching, so going from something like this to something like this, when we compare the same alkane on two, on the same number of carbons, but one has more branches than the other, this has more branches than that, in general, will the melting point increase 
or decrease. Okay? And the boiling point, increase or decrease. So take a second, pause the video. We'll come back and you let, tell me. And then I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. Okay, took a second to think. Well, if you took the second, you could have even went to go look at a table for compounds like this. And to be honest, the relationship is a little bit more complicated than this general simple statement. In reality, there are three key relationships. Um, P1.A. The first uh, property is linear versus branched. Okay. Linear. Think of versus branched. That clearly has more branches than that. So uh, branch versus linear on the same number of carbons. The branched one will have so the linear versus branched. The branched molecule will have a higher melting and boiling point. Melting point, higher boiling point. This is because there, as we increase the number of branches, we're going to increase the surface area of the molecule. As you increase the surface area, there's going to be more, it's going to have to eventually start stacking on top itself. This eventually is how we'll describe cell membranes in the organic chemistry and biochemistry series. A little bit more in depth. But the, as we increase the branching, the branching is going to eventually, at some point, turn the molecule starting to look like a sphere. Meaning that the carbon atoms are going to get closer and closer and closer. And because they're getting closer and closer and closer, it's going to be much harder. It's going to require more energy to melt and boil them. Okay? A little bit of thermodynamics. We'll talk about that in or in the organic chemistry series. Uh, probably won't be towards the end of the first part of the lectures. But for now, it's well enough to know that as we increase the branching from linear to a branch, the branch version will always have a higher melting point and higher boiling point. Okay. The second relationship will come from P2.A. Okay. Branched versus highly branched. So this could be versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, That's much more branched than that one. This is highly branched, that's just branched. In this case, what do you think would be the case? Well, we know as we increase the branching, there's going to be more and more compactness, okay? Eventually, if you could do this with a big enough molecule, have enough branches, that molecule will eventually look like a sphere. Takes a little bit of thinking, but imagine that you have, say, uh, 300 carbon in an alkane, and you branch it as much as possible. Well, those, well, the electronics within each atom will eventually try to bring this structure into a cohesive sphere. Imagine taking this 200 highly branched carbon molecule, which is just all alkanes dropping out of water. 
going to form a micelle. It's going to go, it's, it's trying to go into a sphere because that will have the lowest energy. So because this will be getting more and more compact, we would expect higher branching. Okay. So we're going to expect this to have, since it's going to have higher branching, it's going to have bare, um, has higher branching, it's going to be more sphere-like, so it'll be bare stack. This means it's going to be, have a higher melting point. This would have the lower melting point. Okay. Now this is where it deviates a little bit from this discussion. So up here we have more contact and we had higher, uh, low, a higher surface area. Okay. It's because we had higher contact that we got a better melting point. It's because we have more surface area that we've got the higher boiling point. Remember that a sphere out all geometric objects, all three dimensional geometric objects, a sphere has the smallest surface area. So this is going to be much more like a sphere than this one will. This one will have lower surface area. More sphere like. implies lower surface area. But because we have lower surface area, we have a lower boiling point. So implies lower boiling point. This one will have a higher surface area because it will be less sphere-like. Because it is less sphere-like, it is going to have a higher boiling point. Okay? So that does it with those physical properties. Okay? So now, let's talk about alkenes versus alkynes versus alkenes. So what would you expect as a molecule, sorry, this is the second part, P2, as a molecule increases uh, actually, let's say this as a hydrocarbon hydrocarbon increases the number of double bonds present the Boiling point will increase or decrease, and the melting point will increase or decrease. So again, take a second, stop and think that as hydrocarbon increases, the number of double bonds present, the boiling point will increase or decrease, and the melting point will increase or decrease. Just pause the video here, take a second and think, and we'll come right back. Okay, we're back. It took a second to think, and then you thought about, okay, I'm going to go look at a table. And when you looked at the table, you probably noticed that in general, as the hydrocarbon increases in the number of double bonds present, the boiling point and the melting point both increase. Same is true for triple bonds. Why? This is another discussion on physical chemistry. Well, we remember back to inter intramolecular forces, Van der Waals, and all that. As you increase the number of bonds, 
between two atoms. So going from single to double bond, the, the bond between them, so we increase them, that's going to lead to an increase in the intermolecular force. Because as you increase the bond number, those molecules come closer and closer together, which means they're more in contact. Because okay? they're more in contact, they're going to have a higher melting point. But at the same time, it's going to be harder to weaken them when we go to boil them. Okay, Because of the intermolecular forces that happen as we increase the number of bonds present, the boiling point and melting point must both increase. And I'm going to give you the last one. As the number of carbons increase, this should make sense. As the number of carbons increase within a hydrocarbon, the boiling point and the melting point both increase. Just because you get a longer chain, longer surface area, more just going to increase it in general. Okay. So those are the three properties. As hydrocarbon increases, the number of double bonds present, or also increases the number of triple bonds present, the boiling point will increase and the melting point will increase. Third property, as the number of carbons increase within a hydrocarbon, the boiling point and the melting point both will increase. Okay. That about does it for those, and we're getting at about 27, 28 minutes. And let's see, let's go talk about rings maybe for the next 10 minutes. And then I'll give you a couple problems to try on your own. And then we'll pick up with the third video next time. We talk about functional groups and stuff. Okay, so rings. So imagine taking the two ends of a hydrocarbon, taking two ends of a hydrocarbon and doing that. Whoop. Try to make a circle. Take a piece of string, make a circle. It's basically what happens. Car um, rings though, compared to their linear chained counterparts, will tend to be much will have the propensity to be more reactive depending on what's going on inside because of strain, which we'll talk about next uh, in the next course, series of videos, actually for organic chemistry. And they can tend to be more stable depending if we get the bond angles, right? Because as you know, remember from when we talked about bond angles in the previous videos, that as the bond angles became much nicer, molecules tend to be more stable. Okay. So imagine, so the smallest ring we can form is, is cyclopropane. Okay. So imagine we have propane and we bond at the very bottom. Okay. So this is propane. The ring version corresponding to propane is cyclopropane. Notice that we just add cyclo to just to note that this is a ring. Okay, so we have butane, and then if we turn this into a ring, bring the two ends together, we get the square, which is going to be cyclo butane. So in general, what you do is find the long, count the find the biggest ring. They have to be more rings, actually. Let me take that back. So in, for right now, we're just going to have a single ring and we're going to have things coming off of it. Okay. If the... Go and count how many carbons are on the ring. Then we're going to find the corresponding alkane, alkene, or alkyne and just add cyclone in front of it. Okay. So imagine I had this one. 
that's the ring on five carbons. Smallest ring on five carbons. What would you call that? Well, the corresponding alkane would be pentane. So this would be cyclopentane. But notice compared to when we have five carbons. Okay, so this is cyclopentane. Then the next one, the smallest ring on six carbons is this. Cyclohexane. Seven carbons. Cycloheptane. And then eight carbons. Cyclooctane. Okay. So then we go to that's for the alkanes. Now we go to the alkenes. So the smallest alkene we have is propene. Even though this may not necessarily exist, because of sterics and stuff we'll talk about in the next series of lectures, the smallest one that is theoretically possible if we neglect sterics would be cyclopropene. So sterics basically just means intermolecular stresses. Okay. And then we have butene, which would be, we could do dibutene. Uh, one three uh, cyclo sorry cyclo one three one three cyclo dibu um, what would be the best way to name this yeah I guess this way one three di cyclo Uh, give me a second. Okay. okay, here we go. So imagine that we have butene. We have butene. We're going to put another double bond in there. So this is going to be called cyclo butadiene. This is the important part is here. It's going to tell us we have the two double bonds present. Okay. <clears throat> and we assume that they're only in lowest number there. Because we're not strictly telling you here and here. Okay. Uh, we can do pentene. Cyclopentene. Pentene. We can do that. Uh, cyclo into Dying. Okay. Now suppose we had so this would be hexene cyclohexene. Cyclo hex one three dying or cyclohex dying hex dying uh, 
uh, like so. Okay, uh, but we can also do three. And this is a fun molecule that most of you probably know by now. Is benzene. Common name, but most people still call it. Actually, almost everyone that I know and have ever seen calls it still by its common name, which is benzene. Or in other words, this would be cyclohexa-135-triene, okay? Cyclohexa-135-triene. Okay. And then alkynes, try to do the same thing, going to be a little bit unstable, okay? So we're getting towards the end, we'll give you a few problems you can try on your own until next time and I'll be eventually making a future video with solutions to all these problems. Homework 1. Label in Increasing boiling point. Label in order of increasing boiling point. What's that? Label in order of A. Increasing boiling point. B. Increasing melting point. Okay, so you want to use these molecules. So first molecule is CH4. Second molecule is C2H8. Third molecule is going to be propane. Fourth molecule is going to be butane. Fifth molecule is going to be Butene, sixth molecule will be this, seventh molecule will be this. Actually, let me just increase this to be, make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so use these molecules here and label them in order of A, increasing boiling point, and then for B, increasing melting point. Two, name the following structures. Okay. Name these three structures in the way we would know to name them for right now. And then in the video with the solutions, I'll explain the other naming conventions uh, if needed for these. Okay. Thank you for watching. Uh, this has been a little bit longer than I want. I want three minutes, but it's going on to 40. So I'm going to cut off here. So take note of these problems. And I'll catch you in the next video where we're going to start talking about bronze set lower acids. Again, remind ourselves of what they are. Talking about functional groups and talking about interactions in the molecules with effects of water. Okay, thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye.